I need one point. And that one point's available at the end of that race. 2023 will go down as a, a really unforgettable year. In so many ways, every start line is a nerve wracking experience because you've done everything you can to prepare for that start line. But between the start and the finish line, absolutely anything can happen, will happen, is bound to happen. And that has been really how this year has turned out. Before I started the season, I changed my strategy of training. I had decided I was going to try to break 500 miles in 24 hours. I ended up winning the Florida 500 overall, but I broke Marco's course record on him. So I knew at that point I was on point for a good year. The next correct move for us would be to try a timed event. Um, and to do that, we decided we would actually try a 24 hour world record attempt. I didn't break the 500, but I did, uh, I did break the record. And for that, I accumulated more points. Th that was, took us up to May. So twice in Florida, uh, and, and we were really in a, in a good position in the World Cup, which then made us really started to think then about what we could do in the big distance, because the big distance brings the big points. Uh, we were very fortunate to be able to go to the race around Poland, which was the inaugural World Championship event, uh, over 3,600 kilometers long. Race around Poland, I would say will go down as one of Joe's grittiest performances. When Joe said he had an acute back injury, it was it was pain, it was excruciating. It had 1,500 kilometers non-stop of climbing, and one of them, I it was so steep at the top, I just jumped out of the seat of the bike to try and leverage it out over the last few a few meters, like, and uh, I wrenched my back. I was literally lying on the my physio's bench like on the side of the road in the night time <laughs> and you know his instruction to me was this is going to hurt but it's not going to be detrimental uh, it's not going to be long-term damage it's going to hurt for right now and uh, you know the experience again of all of the things that has happened over the years has taught me and no matter how bad it is right now try to get to the next mile or the next kilometer because that could be different and unless you do it you're never going to know. And finishing sixth overall there got me the World Cup points that I needed, even though I won the category for the World Championship, like which was in its own right a huge accomplishment for me. And then that left me a 12-hour event. Uh, so we had the 500, we had the 24, we had the big distance, we had a 12-hour. That's what I really needed to close out. So after Poland, I thought, World champ, it was fantastic to see him pull the World Championship jersey on. It was a really proud moment. And I did think the World Cup, it would be hard to beat Joe at this point. It really would be with uh, the wins and the records and now the World Championship points in the bag. I thought um, we're home in a boat. And how wrong was I? I was staying in North Carolina and we were in the Blue Ridge Mountains and I was able to be at altitude and, and, and train in the climbs and get really strong and I was really good and, you know, I had a crash. So I shattered my pelvis, eight fractures in my pelvis uh, and one of them was almost all the way through. Um, couldn't walk. I, I literally couldn't even get up off the road actually. So, when I got the call that Joe needed to talk to me from training camp in North Carolina, <laughs> I did know something's up. And I really, I didn't want to hear what I was going to hear, but I kind of knew something's up and it's serious. And let, you know, let's just see what that is. You know, I was laid in the hospital and they were sort of saying, oh, well, you know, we're going to have to put in a metal mesh and we're going to have to screw you together and do all of this type of stuff to go home. Um, and when the noise is all happening out here, that you draw on your own experience and you start saying, right, I'm the expert in me here. I know that I'm being spoken to by experts, but somewhere that has to resonate inside yourself. I certainly thought season's over. 
And I certainly thought, what a great shame. But of course, for me, it was, he's okay. And that's what I care about him. The little bit of luck that's in the unlucky bit uh, was that although my pelvis was shattered, shattered, it wasn't displaced. That gave me hope because then the treatment plan was go home and do nothing. But in my mind, it was that let's go home and build some bone. Nature is incredible and it's one thing I know about about nutrition. You give the body the right building blocks, the body will heal, the body will build. You do the obvious things, vitamin D, up your vitamin D, up your calcium, up your magnesium, up your boron, and obviously protein, and we need to sleep, we needed to rest, all of that. And then we looked at the hyperbaric oxygen chamber. So I was aware of it as a, a potential way to try and uh, help the healing process. Uh, what I wasn't aware of was the impact that that particular type of treatment would have had on me, my body type, my the way I'm built. It also gave Joe a focal point, a something to do, and I knew that was really important for Joe, for his mind to go to that chamber two or three times a week to build bone was a great focus. So I worked off the principle, this is where it is today, but tomorrow's gonna to be different. So seven weeks, literally to the day, we had uh, our second follow-up appointment with the consultant, and Joe walks into the consultant office, no limp, no crutches. And you kind of, I could see the consultant doing a double take, and he looked back down at the desk, and without looking at Joe, he says, how long have you been doing that? So your typical, a uh, time frame to come back as a cyclist from a complex fracture of the pelvis would be, you know, 10 to 12 weeks. It was hard to hold Joe back at about four weeks. Four or five weeks I knew he was on the trainer, as I said, I think he probably was on it a little bit before. The first day he decided and we decided that he was gonna go out on the bike was incredibly nerve wracking for me because even though we could see and he can feel the improvement, in your mind you're still going, I don't quite believe that this has worked out like this. It shouldn't be this quick. It turned out it was okay. It, it was okay, I had no, there was no problem sitting on it, there was no problem with the vibration. You know, I'd obviously lost a lot of the fitness, like for the obvious reason. Uh, recently, I woke up one morning and I just said, you know what, this whole season's not over yet. It's just not. Um, I knew I'd been sitting thinking, playing with the dates and the times, and I knew I could do a 12 hour record. And uh, I'm going to try and see if I can sit on it for 12 hours. At this point in time, I'm nowhere close to that. I'm, you know, not. I'm, I'm four and a half, five hours, like at the most, like I could do at the moment. Um, I can't do it super fast either, but um, I gotta try. I need one point. And that one point's available at the end of that race. I will get myself to Florida, we'll get what we can take with the team to Florida, and we'll try. So this race, what we're trying, new, is riding with the broken pelvis. <laughs> That's enough. To go the distance takes preparation, dedication, a bike that fits, a nutrition plan that works. I think it takes heart. It's hard to keep going forward when every muscle in your body tells you to stop. I don't really know if what happens, what my body is going to do, or you know how it's going to behave in R six, seven, eight. I, I really don't know, but I'm not going to know unless I start. So I was lying on the road on the fourth of October. I really didn't see myself being here today. To be honest, I thought it was all over. I mean, I, all the medical people like are, are still a little bit surprised that I've been able to come to where I come to right now, but. For four hours, I know it can hold out, so after that, we'll see. It's been a great year, like, for the whole the team. Uh, so I want to try to do my best to bring it to a close. Uh, yeah.
that's the view I have of Joe for the next 10 hours. We're two, uh, two hours and 20 minutes in and we are at about 53 miles and look at that blue sky the whole way ahead. The rotaries are always the place of high risk. That is lap three complete. And we're just past six hours and this is the worst section for Joe. The wind is coming off the water and it's crossed but slightly ahead as well. And you can see he just labors a little bit more. But if you can, do the next just shy of four hours that will pull you beyond the category record for 12. Oh, I never thought we'd be here oh my god. I will bet anything he's probably going to come around this route about and he's going to be at 24 miles an hour. He's going to fly, <laughs> going to fly back and then see where we're at then. I'm serious. There, there's well, no, man, doubt, he, no doubt in my mind. He has, he has played the cards close to his chest. He's much closer to record pace than we anticipated. With the wind going down, if he's got some energy left to, to push himself for another three hours, we just might get that record after all. If we have 255.376 miles done, Joe will not only have won the World Cup, he'll have broken the age category 12 hour record. Oh my goodness, crazy. We're all going to be glad to see the 12 come. Joe's still pushing on, not giving an inch. And we reckon it's going to be close to 250 miles. And just for perspective, his best ever 12 hour is 253. And that was a number of years ago. He hasn't gotten off the bike. He hasn't peed. He, he hasn't stopped. The only thing he's changed are his glasses and he's taken his arm warmers off and he has just kept his head down for 11 hours and uh, there's nothing to suggest that that won't change for the final hour. So we're just coming into the last half hour and at the end of this half hour we will be able to confidently say that Joe has the last point he needs to win the 2023 World Cup and I actually think the ride he's put in to get this last single point I mean you'd be hard-pressed to say that there has been a better ride from Joe this year that sing this single point ride is magnificent really Mark, I, I do a stop. and there's his first peace stop <laughs> yeah. okay look at that we are one minute to go all right, Joe, one minute to go. One minute to go. You're just clearing past 140, I'm sorry, 246 miles. And I'm really happy to be the first to congratulate you for not only a phenomenal day, a phenomenal season, and on top of it all, ending the season with the number one ranked ultra cyclist in the world. Congratulations, buddy. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. You saved the best for last. You got it. Joe, tell us how you feel about today's result. Uh, I couldn't really have asked for any better. You know, I, it was a few moments out there I thought maybe that the record was possible, but the reality is I just didn't have the legs today. And uh, and that's, that's something we'll come back to. We were here to get the World Cup and I'm not greedy. I'm just super excited. And, you know, I'm really grateful. I appreciate all the help of the team all year because some of them are here, but some were in Poland and some were in all the races just because they're not here. I don't mean to say I do appreciate everything they did because it's so difficult to put a World Cup together. And after everything's happened, it's just grateful. 
I've had the opportunity. Um, you know, I'm not going to say I'm going to retire, but <laughs> but I'm super grateful that you know we travel the world and we couldn't do what we're doing without all the people who host us everywhere. Uh, so it's a big shout out to them as well for whoever they are. They all know who they were. Uh, somewhere they touched our team, and I'm so grateful for that. So I really appreciate it.